of you with prayer, with sharing, and with the word of God. It's a blessing in our life. It's a blessing to the television station. And it's a bl- also a blessing to the ministry. Thank you very much for taking time to listen and to watch us on the television, my television, and also through the Facebook. Please share it to your friends in your workplace and the people that you know. Because I really believe that this television uh, and the program, the contents, is to nurture you, to help you. So you live a godly life, uh, a, a moral life that is uh, suitable for families and for marriage and especially for our community. In fact, we are building a better Fiji the way the world should be. And without the word of God, we cannot do that because the whole world was created by the word. So if we are living in the world that is created by the word, we need the word because the Bible says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So greetings once again in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I I believe that everybody enjoy your day yesterday, last week, last month. And I believe that God will set another another day for us, uh, another good month for us, uh, a beautiful year for us. And I believe because he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. So before we continue with the program, miracles do happen. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity Uh, to bless the people of Fiji with prayer and sharing of your word. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power. We thank you for the authority that will come from this studio into the screen, into their living room, into their their hospital bed, into their office, into their Facebook account. I pray in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, that they will be met and uh, they will be blessed and they will satisfy by the power and the anointing of sharing today. We thank you, Father, for our lives, for our family. We thank you for our nation. We thank you for our leaders, the Mr. President and the family, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet Ministers and the Parliamentarians. We thank you, Father, for those that uh, run the government, for those that run the big, big organization that assist and help in the running of our economy of our nation. We also remember the Vanua, uh, the Matan Tuetolu, and the the San Etinigaba. We pray, Father God, that uh, you will touch and enable us to see that there is a God, and his name is Jesus. We thank you, Father, for a wonderful morning. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praises. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen and amen. So once again, greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ today. There is a story in John chapter 6. And before I go and pray, and I believe some of you are looking forward uh, to this uh, live broadcast from my television. I'm also looking forward. I always look forward to serve you because that's what God has has placed in my heart. And it's always a blessing. Uh, I heard uh, 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 in a seminar and uh, the facilitators or those speakers, uh, they were speaking to leaders. And uh, I'm just blessed to be there. And he was saying, if you want to be a good leader, then you must be ready to be a servant. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for that opportunity. Hallelujah. Early in, the, in my days as a manager in, uh, in, the, in our international airline at that time, I was introduced to uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, management training overseas and attachment to Qantas and New Zealand NSAT uh, and also in other various uh, uh, aviation organizations. And most of those management, they were just talking about serving, serving, or the service, the service, the timing, the conditions, the product that we sell, the, the connection time that we m- must look forward and we must uh, watch out for our customers, which is the people. And if you want to be a good leader, your people that you lead must be met. And as I come uh, to this side of uh, the coin to, to lead the church, uh, I'm, I'm blessed for God to, uh, to, to allow me to lead the church. And then I look back at my circular work and uh, I praise God for that nurturing that, uh, that we need to be a good servant. 
Hallelujah. When good servant, that means you wake up early more than the people that you serve. You stay up late uh, much longer than the people that you serve. You give more than the people that you serve. Everything that we do, the leaders must be the one that serve longer, more, and better. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for those uh, exposure uh, to those uh, international organizations that nurture me and allow me uh, to come and introduce it in the church, New Methodist Christian Fellowship, and also as a call of God in my life. So when Jesus was talking to the, to the disciple in John chapter 6, as I said before, um, and he said, you, these people, they've been following, uh, uh, sometimes you really don't understand what you are reading. And you, you fast and pray for the Spirit of God to reveal to you what's the real message. And uh, every year I go down to the Holy Land tour. And we will be going again uh, this October, uh, taking some church leaders to go and visit the Holy Site and walk about uh, uh, in Samaria, in Judea, in Jerusalem, and especially in Galilee, where he spent most of his three and a half years as a minister according to his ministry. And he was telling his disciples, you need to look after these people. The Bible says 5,000 men. That means excluding the woman and the children. So normally I will take it like this. It will always be more because in our normal churches today, New Methodist, All Nations, CMF, Lotu SLA, Lotu Dabanga, always more women and, and, and children rather than men. Hallelujah. So you're talking about more than 10,000 people. So Jesus was telling the disciples, you, you guys look for, for something uh, to eat. And they were complaining, Lord, it will take one year's salary. Eh? You have to work for one year and your salary for one year for you to buy the bread to feed uh, these people. And Jesus said, uh, well, you have to look for something. And Philip, one of the disciples, came and said, uh, there is a boy here with a lunch, five loaves of bread, the pita, pita loaf or the pita bread. And two fish. And he said, but uh, how can he feed the multitudes? Hallelujah. And Jesus said to them, tell them to sit down. See, as long as you give something small to the Lord, he can multiply to meet the need, the situation, and the issues in front of you. He just needs that little thing, the little thing, the, the little thing. I believe we are not perfect. Yeah, including the one that is speaking to you this morning. We are not perfect. But God is looking for that, 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 that little faithfulness, the little thing that you can give. Yeah. God asked Moses, what's in your hand? He said, a walking stick. Take that walking stick and point it to the Red Sea. The little things. There are a lot of little things that we have that we, it can be useful in, in the things of God. The blessing that will come to the people around you, to your relatives, to your friend, maybe you have that little thing. Maybe you have the five loaves of bread and two fish. See, most of us, we are ready for the prayer or Tal Tal Atu. We'll be, uh, we'll be praying in the, in the 11.30, the Miracles Do Happen program, and everybody to receive, uh, we are looking forward. But I want to tell you, that's, that's something much greater than healing. There, there is something much greater then open doors of the provision of God in our life. And that is the presence of God. So I want to challenge us today. I want to, to push us into a level of faith and trust in God. I normally share to the people that they, I come to contact with, you don't go to church because it's a program of the church. You go to church, you just love to worship Him. He, he has done so many things. He has done great things in our life. The open doors, the healing of sickness in our body, the restoration of our family. Hallelujah. Some of us that you are sitting right there, you are in the verge of breaking up, a divorce. Maybe a paper is already filed. Hang on in there, my friend. You trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be healed, you and your family. You will be saved, you and your family. You will be restored, you and your family. I believe that the, the platform of my television is not just come by chance or by coincidence or by accident. No, I believe this is a positioning of God in Fiji today that there is a television station more than 
seven times in a day, more than seven times in a day, that you can listen to the word of God. Eight o'clock to nine, eleven thirty like this to midday, one to two, God's first program, where other talatala, other pastors from other churches, they speak every day. And then you have two to three, and then you have three to four. From four, you have the juicy uh, program, which is the program of TBM to the children there in America. And then you have the, the youth program from five to six. At seven o'clock, it's a replay of another preaching or sharing, or even the miracles do happen. Seven o'clock at night. 11.30, and that's another replay. From midnight to six, we are connected to St. Anna, all the way is in Los Angeles for the TBN program where you have preachers like John Higgis, T.D. Jakes, Rod Parsley, Josh Myers, Joseph Prince, the Hill Song, oh, you name it, mighty men of God. They are access to you into your living room. Why? Because I believe this television station is put in place for such a time as this to bring hope to bring restoration to somebody out there. Hallelujah. Now, let us go back to our story in John chapter 6. When Jesus said, make them sit down. Hallelujah. He already knew what to do. See, Jesus is already have a plan. In Jeremiah 29, 11, you know what the Bible says. I know the plans I have for you. And the plan I have for you is for you for prosperity and for future that you hope for. And this, this Bible verse Jeremiah 29, 11, it is talking about the Jewish people or the Israelites when they were crying in Israel, in, uh, in, Zion, in Lebanon. They were taken as a uh, as slave to the, to the place called Syria, Iraq, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar. Because they were so disobedient to God, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come and burn the city and conquer Jerusalem and took so many people, thousands and thousands of them, to Babylon. So when they arrived to Babylon and they were crying, hallelujah, they went to the river of Babylon and they sing the song of Zion. When they were in Zion, they were singing the song that they used to sing in Babylon. So that's where this song came, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down and remember Zion. Hallelujah. So, when God was talking about 29.11, Jeremiah 29.11, I alone know the plan I have for you. So the planning of God, including the slavery, including going to Babylon, including to go and humble themselves. Whatever you're going through in your life, it is a plan of God. You need to repent, stand by the crossroad, and look at the way that is godly. Not the way that is right, not the way that is good, not the way that is easy. No, you stand at the crossroad and look at the way that is godly. Hallelujah. Because when he said, I alone know the plan I have for you. The plan I have for you is for your goodness. Okay. Get some smacking and, and some uh, slavery worker. The toil, and then you'll come back humble in your heart. Hallelujah. So whatever God plays in, in, in our life, it, it's a plan of God in our life. When he said, make them sit down, he already have a plan. Hallelujah. So as I was sharing John 6, I'm jumping here and there. I, I want you to be in line with what God has placed in my heart. So when I pray, you receive the fullness thereof of God's blessing in somebody's life. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity. I always thank God for this opportunity that God can handpick my life and handpick my family and handpick my children, handpick the, the, the church, the ministry, 
and the Tal Tal Gase that, uh, that we can come and be a servant to somebody. That's why we knock on doors. That's why we evangelize. And some people say, hey man, these people, they are not tired of evangelizing. No, we are serving you with the word of God. I believe the, um, the electricity company is serving you with providing electricity. The water authority is providing you with the service of water to flow. Hallelujah. Any problem in the pipe here and there, they re readjust and they repair. So you have a continuous supplies of water. And I believe the telecom also do that with the land telephone. And also the, the, the mobile companies that we have now, they are there to serve us. And I believe New Methodist is called by God to serve you with the word of God. That's why we will not please you. I'm not here to please you. I'm here to tell you what to do. So God can work miracles, signs and wonders in your life. Because if not, when you finish this life, and then what's the use? The Bible says in Mark 8, 36, 37, 30, what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What a waste of time. Because there is there's, there's two eternal life that is waiting for us. One is eternal life, which is heaven. And the other one is eternal curse. And that is hell. And it's my duty as a taltala, as a pastor, as a man of God, to share with you the truth, the truth this life, and the truth about when you go through the door called, called death. So my friend, when Jesus said, sit down, make them sit down. And how these people will eat from the five loaves of bread and two fish, but they just obey. See, the condition of miracle is to obey. And sometimes you see things, you, you, it just cannot match 5,000 men and five loaves of bread. This is the ratio that I will tell you. One, one loaf of bread, 1,000. Two loaves of bread, another 1,000. Three loaves of bread, another 3,000. Four loaves of bread, another 1,000. Make it 4,000. Five loaves of bread, make it another 1,000. 5,000. Hallelujah. 1,000 to divide one loaf of bread. And you know, I said before, it's like a, a roti, small roti, and it's like a baba cow. And that is uh, the, the, the pita bread. So when you put it into half, hallelujah, then 500 and 500, and put it into quarter, hallelujah, and then 250, 250. I'm just talking about the men. I mean, we, <laughs> we, there's, there's nothing in our mind to fathom. You just have to understand in our heart. We cannot, we cannot calculate it with our mind, but we can understand it in our heart. And I want to challenge our life today. Uh, that's where I want to zero in today. If you, want to, if you want the miracle of God to happen in your life, you set the condition. One of the conditions is to obey. Hallelujah. One of the conditions is to listen. One of the conditions is to have faith. Those are the conditions. You set the condition. God will send the miracle. The miracle comes from God. But you set the condition. You want God to perform miracle in your life? You want God to perform miracle in your family? Set a condition. God will send the miracles. I'm speaking like this because time and time again, every week, nearly every day, I see the miracle working hands of God beyond the normal line of duty, beyond the normal lifestyle that I see the hands of God. When it's nothing, God allowed to be there. When it's dark, God allow light. When there's sickness, God allow healing. When there's a separation, divorce, God allow togetherness. I have seen and witnessed the mighty working hands of God continue to move in our life. And that means it can happen this morning. It can happen to you, my friend. Because God is not a man that he can lie. He, can, he cannot lie. The Bible says, if we are not faithful, God remains faithful because he cannot lie to himself. Hallelujah. I can lie. Person next to you can lie. Your spouse can lie. People in your work can lie. The Bible says men can lie. But God is not a man that he lie. So my friend, the number one response that came from them, they for them to listen. Be in the right place to listen. Encouraging words of God. 
When you stay with the eagles, you will fly with the eagles. When you stay with minor birds and bats and owl, and then you can act like them. So be careful where you mingle. Be careful where you fellowship. Because the people that you fellowship with, they make a contribution a lot into your life. Remember these 12 people. When Jesus left, hallelujah, and they set an example in Jerusalem, the very city that they kill him, the very city, the very city that they killed Jesus, the very city was the start of the church at that time they called the way. The Christian comes when they were in Rome. And Jesus said, and teach them what I have taught you. Hallelujah. So my friend, it's available to anybody that you are listening today. When you, when you stay around with the word of God, the word of God will become your life. And that's why you will be encouraged because the situation will come because of the word of God is very encouraging. And the word of God can create mm, something into, into something. He can create um, the small things to be great things. He can create nothing to be something. It was the word of God that created the fish. You remember the story in Luke chapter 5 in Gennesaret when Jesus came and he told disciples, get into the boat, push yourself to the deep, throw the net to the right hand side of the boat. So there must be some catch. And Peter said, we have been fishing all night. We caught nothing. But because of your word, it is because of your word. Stay around where the word of God is preached. Stay around where the word of God is practiced. Joshua tell his people, about three million people, he said, when the priest that carry the ark of covenant lead us, you follow them. There are so many priests. Don't follow any other priest. Follow the priest that carry the ark of covenant. What is in the ark of covenant? The tablets, the stone, the word of God. I tell you, my friend, try to mingle, try to be with people that they talk about God, that they minister to you, they challenge you. Eh? Hallelujah. And that is the word of God. Iron sharpens iron. Don't stay around. Don't. See, you can fellowship with, uh, with eagles. You'll fly like eagles. You minister to the minor birds, to the bulbul. Hallelujah. There are some eagles like the program in the My Television. Don't miss it. Because there are some eagles coming there. There are some eagles testifying there. There are some eagles from America. In the one to two program, there are some eagles from other churches. So twenty four churches in a week. Twenty four churches. They come and minister. So when you stay around with the television station that you receive, you set the condition and God will send you a miracle. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray to send us to right people, right place. Father, if we stay around with the wrong people, wrong motive, wrong topic, Father, your Holy Spirit to remove us from there. Send us to where we're supposed to be so we can be a, a source of blessing to people around us, source of blessing to the church, source of blessing in our workplace, source of blessing to the government of Fiji, source of blessing to the Banua where we come from. We thank you, Father, because we want to set the condition because you will send the miracles. You cannot send the miracles because we haven't set a platform for the condition to fall. Help us today, Father God. Help us to understand that we will set the condition every day of our life. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, my friend, you are, it's, it's wonderful to be here. And if you have some uh, uh, problem, if you want to contact us, remember, it's on the screen, 907-2117. Whatever question, you want some to visit you, you want some to pray over you, or you just want to send your testimony, something happened to your life, something happened to the uh, yesterday prayer, to the last week prayer, last month prayer, and you want to testify. Remember, every miracle that happened in your life, you need to share it. You need to tell it to another person next to you. Why? Because the more you share, you are part and parcel of the relaying team. You are telling the people. 
you, you are testifying to the people. You become a witness to the people in Fiji and around the world because God performed miracles in your life. So I want to challenge us today. Let us live a life that we glorify our God. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. When people see you serving your God and they will glorify the God that you serve. So thank you very much for watching us on television and on Facebook. Continue to watch miracles do happen because it can happen to you. From the studio here in Turek, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. When we walk with God, when we walk in the presence of God, believe that Jesus can heal you today, restore you today, open the door for you today. We receive restoration to the world. In Jesus' name.